Sertol, the Baltic Porter from Oxus Brewing Company here in Winnipeg. So uh, today I picked this uh, this little USB charger slash power bar thing up from a uh, from a yard sale actually. Tis the season, and I couldn't be happier. I must say. So the first thing that comes to mind is it's got this little slidey thing for I guess for parking your phone in while it's charging this isn't the phone this is a multimeter kind of like that and then okay well that's a little awkward probably should have had an extra phone down here but whatever anyway so that's I guess a feature the one thing I notice in the back of here there is no branding at all normally you'd expect to find some kind of a brand on there but i'm not seeing anything i see a model number la is it la 5sb or ssb or something like that i don't know that doesn't probably doesn't mean anything but they're not proud enough to say the name of the company so that's telling so on the front here we've got three uh outlets three standard 110 volt north american outlets and two USB charger ports labeled 2.1 amps, we shall see, and protected, which suggests that there might be a surge, surge protector in there or something, probably just an MOV or something like that. Should we play with it first or should we? Yeah, let's play with it. Okay, so I'll just plug this into my power bar and turn it on. Okay, the protected light comes on. Can you see that? I don't know. It is in me. Take my word for it. It's on. So I guess first of all, let's see if we can, uh, if we get voltage through it. I have to assume it'll do the basic stuff like that. Yeah, 122.5. Okay. And all three of them. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Cool. Uh... USB, let's the charger doctor, I guess. It's probably the best way to see what's going on on there. So yeah, it is putting out five volts. 4.9, huh. That's interesting. They're different. That's amusing. Let's get out the load. Um, do we need a charger doctor for this? Yeah, maybe I'll leave it in there. So what is that set for? That's set for just shy of an amp. Okay, yeah, 0.9. One. 0.2. So the voltage is starting to sag down a little bit here. Can you see that on a charger doctor? Yeah, that's uh, 4.6, 4.7. Let's keep going. One point, so one and three quarter amps are still at 4.7. 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26
Hmm, maybe just wiggly contact or something. I don't know. Anyway, so it's not lying about its two amp capacity. That's nice for a change. Okay, uh, I think it's screwed over time. Oh, you seen that? That looks a little sooty in that. Let me just zoom in there. See that? That looks a little sooty in there, doesn't it? Hmm, that's the ground pin. Why would there be smoke and skid marks on the ground pin? Best get into it. So on the back of this thing, on the input side, it's got the standard North American 3-pin 110 volt, and it's got that to just sort of align it on top of the outlet. Here is your standard outlet. Now, I guess I should uh, go into this a little bit, because I've noticed that only about a third of my odd of you guys are in North America or places that use this plug. The rest of you are in places that use either the European plug or the UK plug or the Australian plug or something like something else like that. So this might not be super familiar. Anyway, this is this is the standard 110 volt wall plug that you'll find everywhere in North America, residential, industrial, commercial, whatever. 110 volt, 15 amp rated. Um, this particular one's old and painted over, which is why it's out, but there's nothing mechanically wrong with it. Anyway, um, this guy plugs on there, and this plastic tab just goes into the grounding pin of the bottom half, just for mechanical stability. And then that hole there, if you have a screw long enough, you can pull this screw out that's holding the cover plate on. That's all it's doing. And you could drop a really long screw down through there and lock it right on. And that would cover the entire opening in the box so it would be legal because you've got the, the uh, outlet and the bare wires and stuff covered, right? That's hidden. So that would be a number six screw, but it would have to be, what, an uh, inch and a half long or something crazy like that? Maybe one came with that when it was bought new? I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's let's just take a, a quick dive into this guy here. Um, I, North American dudes, you can uh, you can skip ahead a little bit, but for the rest of the world who may not see these ones every day, um, so we've got the the black uh, live terminal, the silver uh, neutral, which would go to the white wire. Our, our color code for the wiring is, there's a black wire, white wire, and green or bare wire for the earth. Uh, black is the hot, goes to the breaker. White wire is the neutral, goes to the neutral bus bar. And of course, ground goes to the ground terminal. Um, the ground wire. Some of these are actually enameled green. I'm not sure what color this one is because, well, we've discussed my color blindness before. Um, so the wires wrap around there and there's two screws here because you've got a couple of different options. Not so much, oh, neutral side, yeah, but more on the hot side. Um, you can either come in one and out the other one and off to the next outlet down the wall somewhere, or you can break this little tab right here out in between, and then you can wire a separate circuit to the top and the bottom. That's typically done in kitchens and workshops and places where you're going to have high, high load stuff and you want them split onto separate circuits. Um, but they come from the factory bridged together, so this can just be one 15 amp circuit feeding both sides. Now, this one has some little holes in the, in the back of here, which are similar to those uh, pushing quick connect uh, stuff that I've seen the European guys use. Um, and then there's a little tab in the little slot there. You can stick a screwdriver in to release it. Um, and this is a strip gauge for the length of the uh, jacketing you strip off to, to jam in there. I still typically see electricians using the screw just for, uh, for security so that they know it's done right. There's nothing wrong with you doing the push-in. It meets code and everything. It's just, it's what most of the guys that I see doing, um, but they're both valid. Well, that was an aside and a half, wasn't it? Let's get back to the what I'm supposed to be doing here. 
taking this thing apart and seeing what's going on inside it. So four little Phillips screws. No surprise there. Nice to see that it's not glued or welded together though. That that's always annoying. Okay, so uh, <laughs> spudgy, spudgy, where are you? I don't do. And there's one of those plastic things on the ground. Did I not take that out enough? Hmm. I thought I spun those out far enough. Okay. So there's the back off. And the four screws out. Oh my. Oh, that was unexpected. But that makes it all the more interesting. What's the failure mode? Aha. Well, that's pretty obvious. Here's the hot and here's the ground. The ground is just metal work that goes straight through. But obviously that hot has somehow bent down and splashed into there. Ah, uh, yeah, that sort of rivety piece where that uh, perpendicular bit is riveted on. Obviously splashed down into there. Well, that's interesting. Interesting partly because some jerk sold this to me at a yard sale. And I didn't notice the, uh, the goings on. And interesting that it actually still works even after that. So we've got two different uh, sections here. The top part looks like the surge protection part. Let's pull that off. So what do we got here? We have a X2 class capacitor, 0.01 microfarad, which is just in parallel with the line. And we have a resistor lighting up the LED. And we have what looks like an MOV. Oh, and a temperature and a fuse. Okay. It's getting closer here. That fuse says 5 amps, 115 degrees Celsius, 250 volts. But that's not relevant in this case. Okay. And we could have a couple of uh, MOVs or varistor. And there's nothing written on it saying what its voltage rating is. But it's probably going to be in the 200-ish volt range, I guess. Okay, so the fuse is in capac in series with the uh, the fuse in the, is in series. Sorry to the uh, to the neutral side, um, and so that means this is neutral here as well. This is the hot side. That is the MOV across the hot and neutral uh, through the fuse. This capacitor is again in parallel across the hot and neutral. And the LED uh, is just, okay, so the LED is just showing that the fuse hasn't blown. <laughs> okay, I guess if the fuse blows, that means we've got no more protection. But if the MOV blows open, for whatever reason, that LED is still going to stay on. However, they, the over-voltage condition that blew the MOV would probably take out the LED too. I would suspect. Okay, on to the USB charger. Just one screw holding it in there. That's ugly. So, we have the two USBs here. Good little separation. Slot, that's nice. And there. Um, yep, that's... Where's the transformer? Yeah, the transformer pins are there, 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 there. It's got a pretty good separation there compared to some that I've seen. 
a bit of a slot there, which is the capacitor over top of that. Um, you got a bridge rectifier there. Some passives, the brains of the operation as usual. Um, what's going on with those traces up there? This is interesting. So this one, first of all, the voltage is just in parallel on both of those. That's not really a huge surprise. This one, though, has the two data pins shorted together, which I think I discussed a little bit in the previous video. Um, or, though, maybe it was in the comments of one of the videos. Uh, how, how, so different types of phones look for different clues on the data pins telling them what the capability of the charger is. And of course, there's no standard between manufacturers. So this guy is doing a couple of different things. This one, it's got the two data pins shorted together, which some phones will recognize as, uh, hey, I'm able to supply higher higher current. Um, I think the default is 500 milliamps or something if, if the phone can't determine what it's talking to for a charger. So that will indicate to some types of phones that it's capable of higher. And this one has a couple of resistors, a 330K and a 110K, um, creating a voltage divider onto the pins, which will be signaling to a different type of phone that this guy is able to hand to supply more than just a simple half amp. What are you? So that guy is an ATC 9512. See if I can find a data sheet on that, but we already know pretty much what it is. It's just uh, controlling the uh, buck boot or the uh, the step the buck converter here, the voltage regulation, right? It's just a standard charger chip. Um, got the bridge rectifier there, creating rectified 120, 120 volts DC, be about 150 or so volts. 400 volt capacitor across that to smooth it, and a smaller capacitor as well. Series resistor, possibly acting as a fuse, just for and just trying to limit inrush current a little bit. And then we, uh, this guy, will chop that up into AC into uh, a high frequency, bang it through the transformer. It'll transform it down two diodes to rectify it. So we got a half. Or that's uh, that's better than most of them. Most of them just have a single diode. Um, so that's rectifying both sides. That's nice. Uh, and a couple smoothing capacitors and out to there. Nothing really that shocking as a uh, as a power supply. And actually, I'd say better than some. Certainly better than that one that I tore apart a few weeks ago. So that was an interesting little teardown. Um, unexpected little fault that I found in there. But uh, nonetheless, a relatively solid little module. And it was able to survive the uh, the whatever transient crap happened when that happened. So that's, I guess, bodes well for it. That might actually be this thing doing its job, this protection board. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Comments and questions down below as usual. I will talk to you later.